Hi, I'm Wendy from H2O Bungalow. Today I'm going to share with you how to bring new life into old dark furniture with paint. Don't forget, you can download my instructions and supply list at h2obungalow.com. Search paint over dark furniture. The link to my post and instructions are in this video description too. I'm sending out a big thank you to Homewright Super Finish Max Paint Sprayer for sponsoring this project and this video. The first thing you want to do is to repair any missing pieces or loose trim. There was a corner missing from one of the tables. I used one of the other broken pieces as a template to make a new piece for that section. I cut a new piece out of scrap wood and since it was so small, I sanded down the sides until it fits snugly in place. Next, I checked for loose places on the tables using wood glue to secure any loose trim where I could. Metal office clips are good for spots where a clamp is either too big or too heavy to hold a piece while the glue is drying. Last, I reattached the missing pieces with wood glue and later filled in the gaps with wood putty. I set everything aside to dry overnight. The next day, I lightly sanded the deepest gouges out of the tabletops and shelves with a random orbital sander and 120 grit sandpaper. You'll be able to feel when the gouges are gone or almost gone by running your hands over the areas you've already sanded. I also lightly sanded the edges of the trim and top of the table's fretwork to be sure it was all smooth and none of the old finish was peeling off. If you have a shop vac, it helps to go over your furniture piece to remove as much sanding dust as you can after sanding. This next step is really important. Use simple green and a clean cotton painter's rags to degloss all of the surfaces. This not only gets years of dirt off, it deglosses the surface and prepares it for the paint by giving a good surface for the paint to adhere to. Be sure to get all of the nooks and crannies. These tables had a lot of detail in the fretwork. It was worth it to take extra time and make sure I did a thorough job. Because I was painting over dark stained wood, I knew I had to prime these tables well before painting. I used gripper primer. Other good primers that I really like are Styx or Zinser. There was a lot of fretwork on these tables. I didn't want to focus on spraying too much in each area and risk paint drips, so I pre-painted inside the fretwork by hand with the primer before spraying my tables. My last word of advice on fretwork and wood detail is to be sure to check over your pieces from all angles before moving on to the painting stage. You'll water down the primer and the paint in the same way. You'll start by adding a little water into your paint container first, then add the paint and stir well. Adding the water first helps it to blend much easier and keeps the color from sticking to the bottom of the paint container. Mix your paint and water until you have a thin pancake batter consistency. It was windy outside, so I set up on my porch with my home right medium-sized paint shelter and a tarp to protect what I was painting and stop overspray from getting on everything else. I began by laying out a large tarp, popped open the paint shelter, and positioned it. I added pavers on the inside corners of the paint shelter to help stabilize it from the wind. Next, I added a wood Lazy Susan and placed a piece of plywood over it. You can find Lazy Susans at a thrift store for just a few dollars. Using a Super Finish Max paint sprayer is really easy. There's a dial to adjust the paint flow thicker or thinner at the top. You'll pull the trigger to start the paint flow. 
Tie your extension cord together so it doesn't come apart when you're painting and adjust the spray pattern horizontally or vertically from the spray tip. Always use safety goggles and a respirator when using a paint sprayer. Start by spraying a few test passes on a piece of cardboard to be sure the paint flow is right. Make adjustments to the horizontal or vertical spray pattern as well as the paint flow at this time too. I always begin painting from the underside of a piece first. That allows me to get the feel of the paint and make adjustments before painting what people will see the most, which is the top. Thin paint coats are always better. You can see all I did was to spin the piece around on the Lazy Susan and paint as I moved to the table. Notice that I painted all of the detail work first and then the flat top and the shelf part last. Each table was primed with two coats of primer, and even with two coats of primer, I had some bleed through from the dark wood and the tannins. I allowed the primer to dry completely before adding the top coat of paint. I was a little nervous that after two coats of primer, some of the wood still bled through, but after allowing it to dry, I felt I'd be okay in moving forward with the paint and the color. Plan on giving your furniture piece two coats of paint in the same way as the primer was applied. I started just like I did with the primer by hand painting the fretwork detail. I set up my super finish max with the coral paint, just like I did with the primer, watering it down to the consistency of pancake batter. I did a test spray pattern and applied two coats of paint just like the primer, allowing each one to dry completely in between. One of my biggest time savers is to keep extra Finish Max containers filled with clean water nearby. When I'm done painting or in between coats of paint, I'll cap the container with the paint and run lots of clear water through the Finish Max until it runs clear. I hope you've liked my project and how I've shown you how you can breathe new life into old dark wood furniture with paint. Again, you can download the complete set of instructions and supply list from my blog post at h2obungalow.com. Search paint over dark wood. You'll find a link to everything in the description of this video too. If you like this project, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe to my blog while you're there too. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you real soon on the next creative DIY project.